Hey, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great uh, Tuesday today. Today's uh, this is Coach Bill with Weight Loss Made Easy Solution. Thought I'd get on today. I give you guys a little um, a little uh, strength training uh, tip here that I uh, that I'm uh, starting to look into a little bit more about. You guys know that I'm uh, that Emma and I are educating people about intermittent fasting. Uh, primal eating, which you guys know as keto, and of course, hydrogen-rich water, which is also known to help uh, lose uh, body fat. So today, guys, <clears throat> I decided to, I did some research today. I'm looking uh, online since I've got so much time now to do that. I'm looking at some, uh, some research about uh, the benefits of the interval strength training. Now, what I mean by that, and this is something that Emily and I have been doing for years, is that we uh, we don't do a lot of cardio. We get our cardio through our weight training, and we've been doing interval strength training now for, like I said, quite a quite a few years now. And so now we've we've uh, in the last oh, three or four years we've combined it with our uh, primal eating, which you guys know as a ketogenic diet, and we've uh, an intermittent fasting, and we do some prolonged fasting. And we're getting uh, the, the, the benefits from it is, is, is remarkable as far as for our age. Uh, it's increasing our lean muscle mass. It's helping, it's making us stronger. Um, uh, the energy that we're getting from this is a lot higher. Of course, we're we're doing primal eating, which is a keto, which is a higher fat meal. So we're producing more co uh, more ketones, and we're producing uh, probably ketones twenty uh, most of the day, maybe twenty four seven. So our energy is going to be uh, higher than normal for s seniors. Any anyway, but. Um, I, in the last few years, with my, not my just my, just ourselves, but with our clients, um, the interval strength. Now, you guys have heard me talk about this before. When you're doing, when you're combining a primal eating or a ketogenic diet uh, with intermittent fasting, there is research out there showing that you can still lose body fat without ex exercising. And a lot of you guys uh, probably have heard me talk about this in the past that. Uh, just by changing the type of foods you're eating and the time you're eating it, you can uh, even lose body fat uh, without even exercising or without even going outside or just what, whatever. And, and there's a lot, there's science out there showing that. But if you truly, truly want to get overall health, you really do need to uh, introduce uh, some type of exercising into your daily routine. Now, uh, for us older seniors, we should be doing something every single day. Okay, well, Emily and I have been doing uh, strength training for over 40 years, so it's just in our blood. Uh, I'm not into this uh, fancy hit stuff or this, uh, I don't know, these fancy new workouts they have on TV and all. I'm not into the, I just never have been. Uh, I'm old school and I, for me and from the research I'm seeing so far that uh, strength training is actually more beneficial than uh, those types of exercises as far as bone strength, uh, muscle tone, and increasing muscle. Uh, actually, uh, I don't know if you guys, you guys have heard me talk about cortisol, uh, which is a stress ho hormone, which is, which has a good side to it, and it's got a bad side to it. Well, doing those other fancy exercising causes the body to get into a very stressful environment, which then causes uh, the body to be, become very acidic, and there's detrimental uh, issues uh, caused by that. So you do got to be, be careful what kind of exercising you do pick, but uh, interval strength training or strength training has been around for decades and there's a lot of proof showing how much more efficient it is for uh, strengthening the bones and the muscles themselves, connective tissues especially. So I've, I'm, I'm online, I'm checking out some other uh, 
very knowledgeable scientific gurus out there that are into uh, uh, intermittent fasting as well as like what we're doing and, um, and, and strength training and weightlifting and exercising. They've been doing it for quite a few years. And they're like myself, they like to back things up with research. Well, there's a lot of research out there that covers this issue or this type of uh, protocol that shows benefits. And I, I, if so far, I think this is one of the most aggressive ones and probably the top one, top research out there that was done by the uh, Journal of Translation of Medicine. And what makes this research different than the other ones is that they actually took men that were uh, between the ages of 20 years old and 30 year, years years old, and um, I'm getting my get my notes ready here. There we go. So I got my notes here, so I can make sure I, I I give you the correct information off the research. That's where my notes came from. But they took these 20 year uh, to 30 year old males. And these are males that have been consistently working out for five years, and they've been working out uh, aggressively for the last, I mean, for four to five days a week. So what they wanted to do here is they wanted to take some guys that have really been training hard for five years. Okay, so uh, what they were, so what they were looking for, this is what they were looking for. They were looking for uh, fat loss, um, and they were looking for growth hormone, uh, uh, increase in growth hormones, and they were looking for uh, testosterone levels, and they're also looking for insulin levels also. Well, what they did here is that because they, they, took, this, uh, they, they took these guys that were exercising for five years consistently, and they were at a, uh, a level of training where they could measure these hormones and measure their uh, body fat and muscle tone. And so what they did was they took ha uh, 17 males, 17 males, and now you guys have heard me talk about auto autophagy, you've heard me talk about prolonged fasting and the benefits of those. Um, some of you guys that follow me know that Emily and I do a 20-hour fasting every single day, and then we try to have our last meal around 6 at night. I try to get in, uh, I've got a 4-hour window of eating uh, food, and most of my food in that 4-hour window is going to be high-fat, uh, moderate protein. I'm, I'm going to get enough protein through that 4-hour uh, window to uh, keep increasing my um, lean muscle mass as we, we train. And so you guys, another thing is in the old days when we were competing, uh, it, you know, the, the, old, the, the normal amount of grams per pound of protein back then was 1.8, which for me was like 240 grams of protein a day. Well, that, all that kind of stuff is gone. That actually causes issues with the kidneys and causes issues with stressing the body out and uh, causing your insulin levels to go up uh, too high. But what they did, so what they did here, which was very uh, interesting to me because I, I have always said that the longer you fast, the deeper you're gonna go into autophagy and uh, the more of the growth hormone, your peaking of your growth hormone is going to be longer throughout the day, along with all your other growth hormones like testosterone. And so I, what works for us is the 20 hour. Of course, you guys know that I've talked about that because uh, for us too, we're looking for uh, slowing down, pre, uh, slowing down uh, pre, pre, uh, premature aging, and that's what the growth hormone is going to help you do. But here, which what makes it really interesting and shows you how powerful uh, intermittent fasting is if you combine it with interval strength training and the primal eating, which is a higher fat diet, that you can actually see huge results when you're doing a 16-8. And what that means is it's a 16-hour fast and an 8-hour window to eat. 
Well, I'm talking when I'm talking about a 16-hour fast or a 20-hour fast, or I'm talking about a true fast. That means zero calories through that whole 16 hours. See, there's the key. A lot of people make a mistake who are getting involved in intermittent fasting that uh, they don't quite understand what the difference is between a true intermittent fasting and a dirty one. And a true intermittent fasting means zero calories. So in other words, uh, during our 20-hour fasting, Emily and I are, the only thing we're, we're doing, we're doing our, uh, we're drinking a lot of uh, ha uh, hydrogen-rich water with our sea salt in it. And we can have coffee or we can have drink, uh, green tea. Um, I do have a uh, solution, a, a, a protocol to help uh, escalate fat burning uh, before, uh, just before I go to bed at night. That doesn't affect my insulin. Uh, you guys have heard of apple cider vinegar and you've heard of ginger juice. But what I really liked about this study, it just showed how powerful when you add inter interval strength training with uh, a 16, 16-8 uh, 16 protocol, 16-hour fasting, which means, say, for example, um, I have my last meal at 6 at night, and I won't have another meal until 10 the next day. There's got to be a 16-hour span of not eating any food at all. And so, um, and then you've got an 8-hour eight hour, eight hour window to eat your natural uh you know, healthy food. So for us, what I mean by combining this with the primal eating or ketogenic diet is we're going to eat uh, uh, a higher fat diet, moderate protein, and very, very low carbs. For me, I like doing 20 grams or less a day, and all my carbs are going to come out of either uh, veggies or a small salad, or I'll have some macadamia nuts throughout the day if I want. But here... Uh, I can actually, uh, here at the 16-8 16, uh, 16, protocol, you got an hour, you got an eight-hour window to eat. So you can have your first uh, high-fat meal, which for me would probably be a fat, my uh, fat-burning fat smoothie, protein smoothie that I really like. It's got all the good fats in it and protein. It's got about 35 grams of protein, and I have that at 10 o'clock. And then at one o'clock or, or so, I can have a chicken salad uh, with a balsamic vinegar, and I'll always add a tablespoon of olive oil in it because olive oil is very important to add throughout your day. It actually helps you for, with fat burning, along with a lot of other things, even your mitochondria, which is known as your power plant. It helps to helps to boost that up as well. It's got Olive oil's got massive amounts of antioxidants in it to help you actually um, to help you actually uh, boost your immune system up. And what's crazy is uh, olive oil. And, and I mean, I really I knew about this, but I really didn't pay attention until I researched olive oil more. Olive oil's even got one of the most powerful antioxidants in it, more ten times more powerful than green tea. So that that kind of blew my mind. So, of course, you know, I've been doing olive oil for a long, long time, and now it's my olive oil to my clients who are looking to lose that belly fat or body fat or to add some lean muscle, or for my type 2 diabetics, um, that's their platform now, two tablespoons a day. But anyway, um, so what they did was they took 17 males, and they put them on this, on a 16-8 in, uh, intermittent fasting protocol. And they took 17 other males and they put them on the standard American diet, uh, which is, you know, your higher carb diets, more protein, uh, low fats. So they put them on that. And now both, you know, both groups now, remember this, both groups have been training for five years consistently, uh, you know, three to four to five days a week. So these are people that, that are experienced, that are aggressive with their training, and they're doing interval training, they're doing strength training, so most likely they're going heavy. Okay, so what the, and like, I, like I said, what they're looking for is to see uh, which group is going to burn the most body fat. And 
What's crazy is they not only found out which group was going to burn the most body fat, but they also found out something else, which uh, Emily and I, you know, we log our training every single day. We work out four to five, sometimes six days a week, and we log what we do every day. And if you look at my log books over the years, you can see how I've gradually kept in, uh, increasing my strength and my body fat and my weight is at the lowest it's ever been in my, uh, probably since seventh, seventh grade. But my strength is, keeps going, going up and I'm getting close to where I was when I was back in my uh, com competition days at 220 to 225 pounds. And so what they did was they put these guys on these protocols for eight weeks, okay? And every day they tested them. They tested their, ins their, their insulin level or their, uh, their uh, testosterone, their growth hormones and so, and so forth. And, and they did, so uh, the question was, was what they were, the question was, and the answer to, to the question that they, they were trying to find, find, find out is, what was the percentage of body fat uh, that, they, that the groups lost between each, each other? Well, okay, after eight weeks, this is what they came up with. Uh, there was a 16.4% fat reduction in the intermittent fasting group, and there was only a 2.8% in the standard diet group. That's a pretty big that's a pretty big jump, you know, 16.4% in the intermittent in the intermittent fasting group versus the 2.8%. Now, those of you that are in the health industry or those of you that have been exercising for a long time, uh, you 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 probably know that when you're doing uh, interval strength training, or they call it resistance training also, by adding lean muscle to your body, this is why men can lose fat faster than women, because men have more muscle than women. But by adding lean muscle to your body, you're going to burn more body fat. You see what I'm saying here? Okay, so, by by doing the intermittent fasting, it is putting you in a sort of a autophagy or a state or a uh, it's a uh, a level of where your body is actually producing its own uh, growth hormones and testosterone and other bodybuilding hormones. But they're also because of how the growth hormone has a lot to do with. Uh, helping you build lean muscle because of the it, it helps to uh, the intermittent fasting is helping you produce produce your own new muscle stem cells that you need when you're doing interval strength tra training uh, to repair the muscle that you're tearing as you're exercising. See, that's that's the key here, guys. Is that you got to rebuild that muscle. But you have to put yourself in an environment that does that. Well, this is what was, so that is exactly what a true uh, fasting does when you're not eating any calories at all, okay? So the bottom line is the two groups that they show that they had here, one with the intermittent fasting and one with the standard American diet, 16.4% of the, of the uh, people who were doing, or the, the men who were doing uh, intermittent fasting lost 16.4% body fat. The other group only lost 2.8. So obviously there's a benefit. The, the uh, research showed that there's a benefit by introducing interval strength training, but it seems like it needs to be three, four, five to six day, days a week. Uh, we have a three-day uh, workout routine that's really brutal, and it's designed to put your body into a stress mode, not, not, a, not an unhealthy stress mode, but it's designed to help to spark your growth hormones to actually produce more growth hormones. So um, it, just, it just proves that if you add some kind of training, especially if it's interval strength training, 
to your uh, platform if you're trying uh, on your meals or if you're trying to lose butt belly fat or body fat you will see better results by doing that so those of you that are doing some kind of a weight loss program and you may be uh, not losing the weight you think you should be losing or it's going it's coming off very very slow then most likely you guys you're not you're going to lose some weight if you're not exercising but it's going to be very very slow and of course there's a lot of factors involved in why you're losing weight so slow one of the big factors of course is a fatty liver and the other one is of course um, the uh, imbalance of hormones especially in you women that are 40 over there's there's, there's an I I issue there but this is interesting this I thought was a great research showed the uh, benefits of combining uh, interval strength training and exercising to your weight loss pro program. Well, the standard diet, just to un un understand this a little more, the standard diet group were eating multiple, multiple meals throughout the day. So most likely they were having breakfast at eight or nine and another meal, a snack at 10. You know how the old standard diet was, especially those of you out there that uh, have competed in the past. Every two hours you had to have a meal. Well, actually, you're not giving your body a chance to produce your growth hormones because if you're eating multiple meals, guys, it's causing your insulin to be up all the time, and you're never going to dip into that body fat, your own. Because why? It doesn't have to. Because you're eating every two hours. So it's getting, so it's burning, so your body is converting that food into what they call glucose, and that's what your body is using for energy to use throughout the day. Well, you're producing it every two hours. So why in the world would it even want to dip into your own body fat? And that's why that old way just doesn't work. So they were eating multiple, multiple meals. But the group that was doing the intermittent fasting, which was a 16-8, for 16 hours, they were not eating any calories at all, period. Okay. Well, if they're not eating any calories at all for 16 hours, then where's the body getting the energy from to operate through that day? And especially uh, these, these guys also, also, it, it, you, have, you need to work out in a fasted state. So in that 16 hour fasting, there was a time in there where you work out with no food at all in your stomach. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard the myth about your blood sugar is going to drop, and that's true. It will, it will. But you gotta, you gotta work into this slowly. You just don't jump in doing a intermittent fasting and expect to get the results right right away. You gotta get your body used to burning fat, and that's where primal eating comes comes in. You for the first couple of weeks, you always want to start off with a higher fat foods to get your body used to burning fat. That's why your blood sugar drops when you do intermittent fasting, because the body does, you know, if you're fasting for 16 hours, you haven't eaten, then all of a sudden you stop eating and there's no food left, the body's gonna go, go nuts and it's gonna panic because there's no food left in the liver or there's no glycogen or no glucose left in the liver to be used as energy to operate. But because you've always been on such a high carb diet for so many years and you've been doing multiple meals for so many years, the body doesn't know how to burn fat. So it's not going to dip into its, I'm going to, here, here's why these guys who did intermittent fasting lost so much body fat, because they gave their bodies time enough to burn their own body fat. That's the difference between the two. That's the difference between doing intermittent fasting and the standard American diet. Intermittent fasting, you're giving your body a chance to dip into its own stored body fat for energy. Get you get it? I mean, that's just, I mean, does that seem lo logical? Wouldn't if if you're trying to lose that belly, wouldn't you think that it's logical to 
burn the body fat in that be in that belly itself? Well, that's why this there's so much science backing intermittent fasting. That's why there's so much science backing primal eating and or a ketogenic diet that's helping people lose so much body fat. But the problem is you've got to do true intermittent fasting. And that means no calories at all. Just water, your sea salt, and co black coffee with nothing in it or green or green tea. But the the interesting fa factor is, and they weren't even they weren't even looking for for this part of it, is that the guys that the 17 guys that were doing the intermittent the uh, interval strength training and the intermittent fasting, uh, they also increased more lean muscle mass than the guys that were doing the standard American diet. So that makes this research very, very powerful because it took all it, it took some very unique and disciplined athletes that have been very consistent for five years. All they did was change the type of foods they were eating and they changed the uh, time they were eating them on both sides and the results for the guys that were doing intermittent fasting was uh, incredible. And obviously, those of you that have been following me notice, uh, I mean, we have been doing it for a long, long time. And like I said, Emily and I are in the best shapes of our lives. Our lean, our lean body fat percentage is very, very, very low. And we're still putting on lean muscle and we're still getting stronger. You know, we're... We just changed our wor workout. I'm going back on some of my uh, upper body, my uh, big muscles, uh, to my old power lifting ways to increase our strength even more. And we started this about two weeks ago. And I'm already seeing at, at our age, even Emily's age, I mean, her bench press is, is going up pretty fast uh, because we've done this in the past. So muscles have mem memory. But um, I've noticed mine's doing the same thing. So I'm kind of going to set me some goals. And one of my goals is going to be that I want to be very consistent and be able to do 300 pound bench presses uh, three or four reps at a time. And I want to see how long that's going to take me to get, uh, get there, especially if by me doing these 20 hour fasting puts me in a little deeper uh, environment of autophagy which is going to uh, secrete even more growth hormones and testosterone. I just had a full panel test done on me, a, bl a blood test. I do that every so often, see where I'm, see where I'm at. Uh, my blood test came out phenomenal. Uh, my testosterone is not a normal 68-year-old person, guys. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not even close to being a normal 68-year-old man. Um, those of you that do your blood uh, blood test, you know that most of the time when your uh, family doctor does a blood test, he doesn't really know how to read it right, and you're not getting and you're not actually looking at the blood test the the, the uh, levels of certain uh, of your testosterone or your estrogen to see where 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 they're at because normal to a regular doctor for a man my age is. Well, I don't know, three, uh, I think it's three, 300. And um, I don't want to be at 300 because a 20 year old's around uh, 12 to 1500. I want to be closer to a 12 or 1500 level. And uh, so uh, my, my uh, testosterone level was way up there. And so I'm not a normal, I'm not at the normal what they say. <laughs> 60 year olds, and I don't want to be because that's this is going to help slow premature aging. And this is why knowing your uh, your hormones or know, knowing how to read ho uh, hormones is so important. So guys, the bottom line here is, uh, is that you really want to get the results you're looking for. You need to do interval strength training along uh, with your uh, intermittent, along with intermittent fasting, uh, like I said, you can do a 16A, you can do an 18, uh, 18, uh, 6, or you can do a 20 and a 4. I really like it. Every once in a while, Emily and I'll go 23 hours in a, we'll have a one hour window of eating food. 
But that's where you're going to see your benefits. You're going to get your best benefits. And the American public want to do things fast. So by introducing your interval strength training, and you've got to go three days or, or, or three days, four, five, or six days. And, those, and, and the routine has to be a good routine. You can't just go to Google and put in inter, uh, interval training and find a routine because I've noticed most of them are are a waste of time and they're wrong and a lot of, a lot of them you're going to get yourself hurt. So the routine makes a huge di difference, especially if you're 40 and over, to keep you from getting hurt, but yet you're going to do interval strength training, which means you're going to be working out with heavier weights. That's the, I mean, I don't care what anybody says. You got to work out with heavy weights. That's the only way you're going to get the results you really are looking for. And if you're working out in a fasted state and you're already burning your own body fat and you're training hard for 45 minutes doing interval strength training, do you think maybe by going with little heavier weights and doing the intervals, which is basically timed, one minute rest between each set, you think maybe that you're going to be burning even more calories and you're going to be going deeper into your body fat burning, your own body fat? Absolutely. I tell you, if, if you do it, if you follow these routines, interval strength training, intermittent fasting, find the protocol that works for you guys, along with primal eating, because it's a high fat diet, so your, your insulin level, which is known as your fat storing hormone, your insulin level is always going to stay flatlined. It's always going to be at a base. It's never going to go up. That's the issue. So basically what you're doing is you're in ketosis 24-7 and you're burning fat 20, basically 24-7. Okay? So guys, um, you can go to my YouTube channel, type in Bill Mabry, uh, hit, the, uh, hit, hit the bell. I've got all kinds of videos on all kinds of different protocols that you can go with. You could also, I really recommend you guys going to my Weight Loss Made Easy Solution uh, Facebook group page. I have uh, a lot of free downloads in there. I've got videos in there also. And I also got recipes, fat burning recipes also. Okay, guys. So, guys, I hope you saw some value in this uh, video. I hope it was, uh, it's, it's, it's an educational, uh, it's an educational video for you guys on uh on true research uh like i said these are not fake researches these are actually uh abstracts whenever they say an abstract or whenever they're using human beings as the research then they're the real thing and it takes a while for these to be published so these are published research so they're facts so those are the ones you want to listen to. You don't want to go to Google and type in and it's some blog post that's somebody's opinion. No, these are actual researches. Okay, guys, so you guys enjoy the day. Hope you guys are having uh, a great day so far. I see uh, Bryce Cameron is on our, our new uh, up-and-coming firefighter who's doing a great job out there, Bryce. Good, good luck with that, and, uh, and uh, we'll see you on the lines. Okay, buddy, have a good day, everybody. See you later.